Oh my gosh. Chaos Six Packs are back on shelves. You can find these at your local Walmart for the price of $19.98. Skadoosh! We're going to see what we can get inside of one of these. They come out like every two, uh, or twice annually, I should say. Um, but there's promos inside, which are usually bulk. We're going to add up all the value, see if it's worth it to actually purchase one of these. And then you get a bunch of stuff from Pioneer. And that's what I thought was pretty cool. So Chaos Six Pack Pioneer style now, now that Pioneer's a thing. Uh, packs randomly inserted, packs shown on box may not be contained within. Very interesting. There are some good cards we can pull out of this. Let's tally up the value. Let's do this. How's everybody doing today? I am doing just magnificent. If my knife would actually cut these boxes open, we'd be doing just phantasmo. All right. So journey with me as we tally up the value. I hope everyone's having a fantastic day, and I hope I can open these up without any problem. So, yeah, 1998. Um, for six packs, um, we're going to break it all down, I'm sure, in the comments. Or not in the comments, in the, uh, in the video. We'll see what's really going on. I'm not going to show the promo just yet. We're going to flip the promo over here in the corner, upside down. And uh, I can already tell you what all these packs are just by uh, a quick glance at them. But, or even the sides of them, because I'm that crazy. All right, so our first one, we got ourselves Guilds of Ravnica. The average of these I'll display on the screen. Um, how much the pack's actually, the value of every single pack, according to TCG Player. And uh, we'll move forward from there. Let's see what we get here. All right, unexplained disappearance. Some of this, some of that. I'm only going through the comments because there is some common value inside of these packs. I'm not going to spend too much time on them. I'll just go through them like I just did. And uh, we'll see what's really gravy. Gatekeeper Gargoyle is our first uncommon. Followed by a Wand of Vertebrae. I thought something might actually happen with that card, but I never did. Uh, Thoughtbound Phantasm, uh, not a bad card in the right kind of brew, for sure, if you're running a Defender and whatnot. Mind, uh, Mind, Midnight Reaper, that's a solid little pool. Skadink, all right, we got one. Uh, yeah, this is a really good sought-after card if you are uh, brewing any colors in black, really, and have a lot of creatures out, because you're taking one damage, but you're drawing a card every time. Really, really cool. Not bad at all. Celestia Guildgate and an Insect Token out the back. So I'm going to put the value pools up on top. Uh, for what I believe is value anyway. Anything over 25 cents. This is from Ixalan. Anything over 25 cents is going to make the video. Foils included. Uh, no matter what the foil is, it's going to make the video. All right, all right. Is that camera better now? What do you guys think? Is the camera looking pretty good? Siren's Ruse. Oh, what a great card. Like, seriously. Exile target creature control. Then return that card to the battlefield under its owner's control. If a pirate card was exiled this way, draw a card. Really, really cool. Unknown Shores. That's right. Nobody knows. It's unknown. All right, let's get into that good good. We could pull a Carnage Tyrant for all the marbles. Trove, walk the plank. This saw a lot of play, actually, during its time. Destroy target non-merfolk creature. Then we have Glorifier of Dusk. Vampires, I don't even... I've never even played this card before. Pay two life uh, against flying and Pay two life. Glorifier gains vigilance. Uh, that's probably why I never played it. Tashana, Voice of Thunder. All right, we're off to a pretty good start value-wise, in my opinion. Um, I haven't tallied anything up, obviously, because... I gotta do it after the video. But Tishana, Voice of Thunder, really, really cool. Its power and toughness are each equal to the number of cards in your hand. You have no maximum hand size. When Tishana enters the battlefield, draw a card for each creature you control. Not too bad. Not too bad at all. That's a value uh, pool right there. Swamp and a treasure token. That is basically worthless. Gate Crash. Can we get some nice shocklands out of here? I remember I opened about seven or eight booster boxes of Gate Crash. I think one time we pulled seven shocklands out of one. Really, really ridiculous. Not a whole lot of value outside of the shocklands and whatnot, um, but there is some. I mean, if, obviously, if you come across it, we're going to find out. Uh, Merfolk of the Depths, Fire Fist Striker, the Veteran, and. Biovisionary. There you have it. Yeah, poopy. But uh, for three at the beginning of your end step, if you control four more creatures named Biovisionary, you win the game. I've seen some people get crazy and try to make decks around this to win the game like that, but it's not that easy to pull off, I'll tell you that much. All right. That's probably one of the bulk pile, I would imagine. And then we got a whole lot of nothing. Why is this even in here? Does anybody know? I have no idea. Why, why is it in there? Oh, crap. Didn't even see that. Unstable. Uh, that's bringing in a little bit of value right there for the pack. Let's see what we get out of here. Now, the lands. If you pull a foil land, unstable, you're cooking Heaven's Bakery, man. That's what's going on here. You are doing really great. Gravy, baby. Eager Beaver. All these cards are kind of like, uh, it's, it's from the unsets, so it's kind of like goofy. 
Um, it's like a very small little format you could play in with these cards just for like fun, basically your casual play. Uh, Numbling Jellyfish. None of these are really worth much. Um, some rares are worth a little something, but I mean, really, there's not a whole lot of value in here unless you pull the lands. And I'm sure there's a few exceptions. Um, secret base. Probably not that secret, all right? If you're a common, throwing it out there. Rumors of my death. Oh, I hope that never happens. All right. So we got that. And then we have Spy Eye. If anyone wants to read these cards, they're really neat. I just don't want to spend too much time going over them. Spy Eye. Oh, we got one of them. Uh, yeah, let's get the other. Steam Powered. Augment. Uh, reveal this card from your hand. Combine it with target host. Augment only as a sorcery. Plus zero, plus four. Cool. Then we have Graveyard Busybody. Let's just read the, uh, the rare, what it does. All graveyards are also your graveyards. That's cool. Graveyard Busybody's power and toughness are each equal to the number of cards with flavor text in your graveyards. As you know, not every card has a flavor text. That's what I would be down here. You have to hang around with the graveyard if you want to catch the talking dead. That makes sense to me. I do understand. Ooh, we got a mountain, though. That is pretty legit sauce right there. We'll take it. Uh, yeah, value on these, not too bad, as you can see. Goblin Slingshot. <laughs> All right, Goblin Slingshot. Whenever you, cr whenever you crank. I'll stop right there. Uh, Goblin Slingshot. Creatures you control get plus two, plus zero, and gain trample until end of turn. Watch out for them crankers, man. And a Gnome Ball Machine. There you have it. All right. Foil Vampire from this. That's probably actually not too bad of a pool, um, as a foil vampire token. I'm not sure the value, but we're going to find out together in this video. All right, legit sauce, man. So we got our first foil. That is something. We'll take it. Guilds of Ravnica. Let's see what we can get out of it. We're looking for shock lands. We really are. Radical Idea. This card was actually worth over 25 cents for a while there. Urban Utopia, the bats, some patrolling, Siege Worm. Okay. Goblin Electromancer. This does see a heck ton of play, actually, believe it or not. Lava Coil. This one was also a card. At one point, this was $1.50 uh, during its heyday. I'm not sure what it's at now. It might have gone up ever since things were banned. Uh, I'll put it in the value pile. Sinister Sabotage, another great card. Sees a heck ton of play in the current standard. Counter target spells are available for one. Not bad at all. So there's two value cards in the uncommon. Swatch Cutter Giant. That's right. Aurelia, Exemplar of Justice. Ba -da -ba -da -ba -ba. We'll take the value. We'll take what we can get out of this. Uh, it's a four drop. Great card with the mentor ability. And then at the beginning of uh, combat on your turn, choose up to one target creature you control until end of turn. That creature gets plus two, plus zero, gains trample if it's red, and gains vigilance if it's white. Not bad. Nice little pool there. Candlelight Vigil to seal the deal and close things out there. All right, it's a foil, though. We'll take it. Down to one pack to crack, Jack. I'll put that. Whatever. Foils go up in the value pile, no matter what. Probably not worth a whole lot. Kaladesh. We could pull masterpieces out of here. If I pulled a masterpiece right now, uh, I'd be pulling on my own stuff right now as well. There you have it. Not a whole lot of value in the common slot. I think it was two cards over 25 cents. None of them are just pulled right there. Weapon Craft Enthusiast. The Long Finned. Sky Whale. Minister of Inquiries. There you have it. All right. And Electrostatic Pummeler is seeing a little bit of play in Pioneer. There's no doubt about that. But nothing too fantastic to write home to. Write home about. There you go. Got a Mountain and a Thopter token. So no crazy pulls there. Our promo. Oh, that's not bad. A Tali Primal Storm. I feel like I've pulled this card out of these promo things like a hundred times. It's that ridiculous. All right. Let's get into the next one. Sorry for wasting your guys' time. Let's tally up the total right there, see what we're at. I have no idea what it says. All right, what do we get out of here? That was a good little promo card, though. I do uh, I do like that. All right, I'm going to pull this back in case the promo's revealed. I want to keep it a secret. Uh, yes, I do. We got some of these. One of these. Ooh, wow. Not too bad. Not too bad at all. Got one of those. Oh, that's actually a good promo. I'm not telling you what it is, but we will find out together in a moment. And our Kaladesh pack. Let's start things off with Mr. California here. Here we go. Come on, just give me a masterpiece. The odds of pulling one out of this are extremely rare. I'll have you know that. They're extremely, extremely rare. All right, larger than life. Revoke, glass, rush, malfunction. And then we got the Express with a Ballista Charger. All right, fair enough. Furious Reprisal. All right, not bad. 
Start your engines. That's right. Rev them up. And metallurgic summonings. Mythic. All right. We'll take it. Uh, whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, create an XX colorless construct artifact creature token where X is that spells convert a mana cost for five exile met metallurgic metallurgic summonings. Return all instant sorcery cards from your graveyard to your hand. Activate its ability only if you control six more artifacts. Anyone ever run that? Um, and did you have success with it? Is the other question. I'm not sure that sees too much play. We got a gate crash pack. Let's do this, Brutus. Come on, Shocklands. We're rooting for Shocklands. Aerial Maneuver. Tracer. Slice. The old pet. Mm-hmm. Oh, if you guys haven't seen my video, if you're into MTG Arena, uh, for whatever reason, it uh, didn't make its rounds, uh, but go check it out. It's like the best historic deck you can build. Just go back one video. I'm sure I'll include it at the end screen here, but it's really, really good. Mental Vapors. I just annihilated the rank in it. That's all I'm saying. Mental Vapors. All right, not too shabby. And then we have, oh, if I'm not mistaken. I, I, oh, no, it's the Is It Charm. Whatever the Is It Charm, I think it's the Is It Charm, or one of these two. Really, really good, powerful cards, though, for sure. That might be in the value pile. Gateway Shade, all in its glory. And Aurelius Fiori. Another Mythic, though. We are really hitting the Mythic slot. It's pretty cool. Deals X damage divided as you choose among any number of target creatures and or players. Tap each creature, dealt damage this way. Players dealt damage this way. Can't cast non-creature spells this turn. Hi, And we got a foil, True Fire Paladin. That is something. I'm just saying. Uh, it's got the Vigilance and the foil and the stuff and the Skadoosh right there up in there. I love it. And we got a forest. Man, a Shockland would have been really cool, though. <sighs> We're not giving up hope yet. Guilds of Ravnica. Let's go, baby. Let's go. Let's bring out that awesomeness. There we go. You guys ever pull a foil um, uh, shockland out of one of these? It's only happened once to me. Maybe maybe twice. I think only once, though, I pulled a foil shockland out of any pack ever. But, man, those are really sought after. If you pulled one of those, man, hats off to you. I like to hear about it. Goblin Electromancer. There you go. Molder Hulk coming at you. District Guide. Not a terrible card. Really, it's not. It's not too bad. She's playing. Then we have Discovery and Dispersal. Not a bad card either. Where that's Surveil 2, then draw a card. That sees a lot of play, or used to at least. Not sure the value. Oh, thank God. We finally pulled one. Hooray. All right, we got We wanted a Sacred Foundry Shockland. That just earned back a lot of value. We might, fingers crossed there. Fingers crossed we might actually get our value back on this opening. Redunculous right there. And a Golgari Guildgate. We'll take it. With a Goblin Token to punt. Unstable. That's right. All my exes will tell you that is what I am. Let's get to cracking this, baby. Let's get to doing this. Two Guilds of Ravnica packs in one. I just noticed that. It's kind of interesting. All right. We got Wall of Fortune. The Eager Beaver. This, that, and the other. The art on this was very, very cool, though. I must give them that. Um, if anything, I'll pay attention to the art over anything else. Because uh, the abilities on the commons here are not that great. Snickering Squirrel, Box of Free Range Goblins, all right. The Five, the Mantis. We are at our Uncommons. Slaying Mantis, there you have it. Legit, oh my gosh, Clock of Doom. Boosh, all right, that's legit stuff. Move the Crank, sure, man. Uh, every thingamajig. <laughs> I think there's a certain version of this that's worth a pretty penny, but I don't know if it's this one. Uh, regardless, there you have it. We pulled an every thingamajig. Tap it, add one mana of any color to your mana pool, and then for one tap, say the flavor text on a card in your hand. Target opponent's guesses. Target opponent guesses that card's name. You may reveal that card if you do, and your opponent guessed wrong, draw a card. For eight, everything in Majig deals 12 damage to target creature. If that's said to any target, that'd be busted. Just throwing it out there. We did get our, I'll put that up here for now, our uh, Full Art Mountain. Always welcome. It's two Full Art Mountains we got. Genetic Recombinator. Recombinator. Sure, man. Why not? There you go. We got one of those in the Uncommon. And a Mandatory Friendship Shackles. All right. All right. All right. Going home a loser. Whoa! Another one of these vampire. Uh, now, I'm curious. If these are over a buck, I'd be really impressed. We're going to find out, though. Foil Vampire. If they're that common, I mean, they're probably not worth uh, too much. We're on to Guilds of Ravnica. It's our third pack, I believe, out of this entire opening that we've opened to this. If we can pull one more Shockland, wow, 
I'm just saying. Two shock lands almost get your entire value back, depending on what they are. Beam Splitter Mage. Disinformation Campaign. I really hate this card. Just throwing it out there. Uh, Inescapable Blaze. Legit. And Atrada the Silencer. One of those cards that could just win an entire game. Atrada the Silencer can't be blocked. Whenever Atrada deals combat damage to a player, exile target creature that player controls and put a hit counter on that card. That player loses the game if they own three or more exiled cards with hit counters on them. Atrada's owner shuffles Atrada into their owner's library. I've seen people try to do this. It just doesn't ever work out for them. I'm, I'm just saying. It doesn't ever really work out for them. If the casting cost was a little cheaper or something, I mean, it might have done something, but nah. Ixalan is our last pack to crack. What are we going to get out of here? All right, what are we going to get out of here? Legion Conquistador. The Tide. Submerge. Monitor. Relic. Scoundrel. Armasaur. Crown. Creeper. Everyone's got one. Tell me about your Creeper. Woodland Stream. Sadistic Sky Marcher, not a bad vampire, honestly. It's actually not too shabby at all. And Vada's Hunger. All right, one of the more less sought-after uh, uh, cards in this set, but not bad. It's got the Ascend, and then each opponent sacrifices a creature. If you have the City's Blessing instead, each opponent sacrifices half the creature to your sheer controls rounded up. Could be pretty brutal. All right, the Mountain and that, whatever that is. And what did we get for the last one? Oosh! Beast Whisperer, promo foil. Not bad. Let's tally up the value, see what we got. Oosh! There you have it. So, I have no idea what we just did there because, uh, you know, I got to do the edits. But, uh, skidink. All right, I appreciate you guys tuning in. Thank you so much. And, uh, yeah, skidink, skidink, skadoosh. If you enjoyed this video, it would be so great of you if you took a moment and hit the like button. And also, check out these sweet videos on the channel. Oh, Jackson, you saying hi during the video? Oh, you're so adorable. Appreciate you guys. Thanks for tuning in. Skadoosh.